In the cold, silent expanse beyond our solar system, something impossible is bleeding into our reality. It's not a signal, not a spacecraft, not even a message in the way we understand one. It's something stranger and quieter. A visitor from the stars known as 3i Atlas is shedding pure nickel 10 LB per second as it races through our system. But not just any nickel. This is refined, industrial grade and nearly free of iron, something that should not by any natural process exist in the cosmos. And now the James Webb Space Telescope has just confirmed what some scientists feared all along. This isn't a comet. It's not even an asteroid. It may very well be a fragment of technology, a relic or something far more deliberate. This isn't a discovery, so it's a challenge quietly hurled at the feet of humanity. Because if what we're seeing is real, then everything we thought we knew about cosmic objects just collapsed. It all began on July 1st, 2025, when a telescope array in Chile picked up a fast-moving object slicing across the sky. At first glance, it was just another icy interloper, a comet from the great beyond. But this was only the third confirmed interstellar object in human history, and its velocity, 130,000 Tsiltunxie, meant it came from outside the solar system. That alone was extraordinary, but what came next shattered every expectation. When astronomers turned their most powerful instruments toward its coma, the glowing halo of gas and dust surrounding its nucleus, they expected to find the usual suspects, water vapor, carbon compounds, silicates, and trace metals. Instead, they found something that made no sense. 3 i Atlas was releasing pure nickel into space, not just traces, 10 LBs every second, and where there was nickel, there was no iron. That was the first red flag. Because in space, nickel and iron are forged together in the same stellar crucibles. They're cosmic twins. To find one without the other is like discovering salt without sodium. It doesn't happen unless someone or something made it happen. The news spread quickly, but not everyone dismissed it as just an oddity. At Harvard, one astrophysicist saw in this metallic shedding something eerily familiar. Not natural, but industrial. On Earth, separating nickel from iron takes energy, technology, infrastructure. You don't find refined nickel scattered around the desert, and you certainly don't expect to see it ejected into space from a comet. This was a process, not a product of chance. He warned, nature doesn't do this. Industry does. Suddenly, the question shifted from what 3i Atlas is to who made it. The James Webb Space Telescope was called in. Its instruments peeled away layers of mystery, revealing not water ice, but a cloud rich in carbon dioxide, the highest CO2 to water ratio ever recorded in a space object, 8.1, while our comets averaged just 4%. This was chemically alien, and the metals, the, they weren't raw ore. They were refined, specific, and constant. Not a natural leak, but a chemical signature. And in that signal, perhaps a code, but chemical anomalies were only the beginning. As astronomers tracked 3i Atlas's trajectory, the unease deepened. It wasn't just passing through the solar system randomly. It was navigating it one by one, and it made astonishingly precise flybys of Venus, Mars, and Jupiter, a statistical impossibility for any natural object. The odds of this path occurring by chance, 0.05%, a cosmic miracle or an engineered route. Even more suspicious, its closest approach to the Sun, its perihelion, happened behind the Sun, perfectly timed to obscure it from Earth's instruments during its most active phase. Coincidence or design? Some now believe this wasn't just a visitor. It was a surveyor moving retrograde against the flow of our planets, tilted at just five degrees, as if it had been programmed to move through our system the way a satellite might scan a city block. So slow, deliberate tour of the inner solar system, collecting data or perhaps transmitting it. The James Webb Space Telescope with its unmatched infrared eyes, delivered the final blow to conventional theory. Its instruments broke down the spectral fingerprint of 3i Atlas, and the results were stunning. Not only did it confirm the unusual absence of iron, but it also revealed traces of metallic alloys not known to form naturally, alloys with properties that suggest purpose, not accident. Combinations that on Earth would be used in high-stress environments, spacecraft hulls, energy converters, deep space sensors, and yet here they were freely drifting from an object we thought was just a rock. The alloy ratios, when plotted, showed regularity. 
almost as if they were being released in sequences, patterns. And that's when some theorists proposed a chilling possibility. What if the elemental composition isn't just strange? What if it's language? A message not spoken or written, but coded in atoms. The signature of a civilization so advanced, it doesn't use sound or light. But chemistry to speak, scientists, initially assumed the release of nickel and gas from 3i. Atlas was the result of conventional cometry, outgassing, heat from the sun triggering volatile, compounds to burst from the nucleus. But deeper analysis revealed something strange. The release was too smooth, too uniform, too controlled. Unlike typical comet outbursts, which spike and fade chaotically, this emission maintained a consistent rate. Not only that, the direction of the gas flow was off-axis, not aligned with where sunlight should have caused sublimation. In fact, the ejection appeared directional. That's when researchers began to rethink everything. What if this wasn't outgassing at all? What if it was propulsion, not in the sense of rocket engines, but something subtler like micro-thrusting via material ejection, a known theoretical method for deep space maneuvering, the kind of system an ancient probe might use to correct its path using only internal resources, disguising its course changes as natural emissions. A kind of camouflage through physics, hiding intention beneath what appears to be chemistry. To many in the scientific community, 3i Atlas is beginning to look like a more aggressive version of Oumuamua, another interstellar visitor that defied explanation when it tumbled through our solar system in 2017. But where Oumuamua was small, quiet and elusive, Atlas is bolder, brighter, and far more massive. Both objects exhibit non-gravitational acceleration. Both show chemical anomalies, and both took trajectories that feel deliberate. But there's a key difference. Atlas is shedding highly specific materials. It's as if between then and now the stakes have escalated. Some theorists now suggest Oumuamua was a scout, an initial test, and 3i Atlas, the next phase, a device not just passing through but interacting with our star system, performing maneuvers, releasing signals, or possibly even testing responses. And we caught in its wake are only just beginning to understand that maybe, just maybe, this isn't random at all. Maybe it's a sequence, a series of encounters. And 3i Atlas is just the second note in a much larger symphony we were never meant to hear all at once. Amid the growing intrigue, another disturbing reality has emerged. Some of the data now surfacing about 3i Atlas was gathered months ago and sat unprocessed. Deep sky surveys, private observatories, even defense-oriented sky-watching systems picked up metallic signatures, trajectory inconsistencies and emission anomalies, but either failed to flag them or never shared the findings publicly. It wasn't until citizen scientists and independent researchers began correlating notes that the full picture emerged. And when it did, a chilling question followed. Why didn't the agencies warn us sooner? Some believe they were overwhelmed. Others think the anomaly was too subtle to classify. But a growing number suspect something more strategic, that someone recognized how unexplainable this truly was and chose instead to delay, to observe not just the object, but our reaction to it. Because in a world where information travels faster than light, the real data might not be coming from 3i Atlas at all, it might be coming from us. As the debate rages on, a philosophical shift is starting to take hold. Maybe 3i Atlas isn't here to say something. Maybe it is the message. A vessel built not for speed, not for return, but for durability across millennia. A probe that was never meant to survive entry, but to leave behind a chemical fingerprint so unmistakable it couldn't be ignored. A trail of metals and gas calibrated to puzzle any civilization smart enough to detect it, in this view, 3i Atlas becomes more than a visitor. It becomes a signal in material form, one that doesn't use language, light or code, but elemental complexity. Its materials, nickel-rich, iron-free, alloyed and distributed deliberately, may not be debris. They may be breadcrumbs, each one placed to provoke thought, not contact. And if that's true, then the object itself may be less important than what it causes us to ask, because the real signal may not be the one we're receiving but the one we're now sending back out simply by acknowledging its existence. When orbital analysts plotted the trajectory of 3i Atlas in three-dimensional space, an unsettling pattern began to emerge. Its path wasn't just mathematically unlikely. 
It aligned with gravitational assists from multiple planets in a way that seemed orchestrated. First Venus, then Mars, then a near-perfect slingshot past Jupiter. Each flyby adjusted its velocity just enough to shift its course precisely, like a probe using the solar system as a navigation grid. But more disturbing was its inclination, just five de grand off the ecliptic retrograde but not erratic. This wasn't a wild interstellar fragment bouncing through gravity wells. 